We are back yet again for another One Piece chapter review, walkthrough, breakdown. I don't know what the fuck these are, actually. Um, but we're at chapter 1043, We Die Together. And uh, I kind of really just want to get into this chapter, but we do have to go over the cover page. Um, it's just um, Charlotte Oven and Charlotte Bruley arriving at Whole Cake Island. Uh, we got we've gotten some more like I think like the past two are ones that I don't particularly like, but they are important for setting up the story for the cover story. So whatever. I've wanted to get into the chapter because Luffy is down and out. He lets the gear forth go. Momonosuke says that his voice is gone, meaning that he no longer has a life in him, and he returns to his normal base form. And we get the big text boxes, Skull Dome, Rooftop Battle, Victor, Kaido, King of the Beasts. And this entire time, the CP agents know exactly what's going to happen. Because Kaido looks at the CP boss and says, Do you know what you've done? And the boss just simply tips his hat and Kaido blasts him with a Conqueror's Hockey infused Baguya strike. 100% killing the man. I have absolutely no doubt. The top of the dome starts caving in. The other agent that is still conscious tips his hat. CP0 guy is down. So I'll talk about more about what the Luffy knockout means because the end of the chapter is important to it. And, yeah. But we get to see that Kawamatsu is um, still kicking. We didn't get a confirmed kill or anything. But we're just getting a catch-up with Kawamatsu. And then we get to see where I think most of this chapter's uh, big things come from and Kaido comes down and this was a thing that Kid had brought up last chapter which was um, what do we do if Kaido's the one to come down and Law said then that's it we can't fight anymore and Kaido's come down and he asks where uh, Momonosuke is he declares his sur he demands his surrender and then he goes on his whole bravado and he just breaks their spirits. After pointing out some people won't have theirs broken. Um, uh, Marco saves Nami from a uh, blast breath. But Kaido goes on to say, Onigashima will now fall on the flower capital without delay. You'll find I won't be as soft as Orochi was. This country is just a giant weapon factory for me. I don't care if they're women or children. Everyone here will be my slave. You'll be free to drop dead after your bodies can't take any more work. That's how you'll live the rest of your miserable lives. After all, I can always replace you when you're gone. You chose to oppose me. Facing my wrath now should come as no surprise. This is what it means to lose in war. You gamble with your rights and dreams. Bring me Momonosuke. This doesn't end until then. Which... Um... Another thing that has to tie into the ending. Uh, Joy Boy, which is in the chapter, and... Kaido, I'll bring it up later. But then we can see that some of the Beast Pirates are trying to ambush Kid and Law, but their crews stop them. Uh, Law seemingly has his sword drawn already, though. So he's clearly not down and out, down and out. Uh, and it's more just chapter catch up. We get to see how everything's going. The castle interior basement is nothing but flames, according to one guy. And. Then we get to see that Kid and Law lied, not gonna, lied, probably. Um, Kid says, I'm fighting Trafalgar. Surrendering or letting him kill us are both out of the question. And Law complains about Luffy not being able to do his job. But Kid is able to manifest yet another robot arm, which is the color for this chapter. Um, and then we cut to what the real meat of the content of the chapter is which is Momonosuke and Yamato's back and forth. To sum it down, because I'm not reading each text box, 
Momonosuke is just fully admitting we should surrender to Kaido. We have no chance of beating him. Luffy was the only one. And Yamato is saying that we have to fight. If we can't beat Kaido, we should go down trying just like Odin. That's the samurai way. And Momonosuke says, uh, Luffy's our only option. Now that he's failed, we have to give up and just not throw any more lives away. And Yamato then backs up by saying that every day slaves will die of exhaustion if they surrender and all their deaths will be on Momonosuke and it's not saving anyone's lives. Uh, Momonosuke is caught off guard and I guess he kind of realized that this is true and this is the one panel that I'll read from Yamato. All the daimyo that allowed Orochi to have his way went to their graves full of regret. Everything Wano endured in the past 20 years was for the sake of this battle. Even if surrender is our only option, I'd rather we die together. Which really shows that Yamato is embracing the entire Odin mentality. Like, this entire time Yamato has referred to themselves as Odin, as sort of a pseudonym, since they wanted to be Odin, or they liked how Odin was, whatever. But now we get the true manifestation of that energy with they're not all they're not just talking out of their ass to be like yeah i want to be odin until i have to make a tough decision yamato is fully willing to die to live by odin's and subsequently yamato's ideals uh and then we can see that kaido's inside just wreaking havoc blowing stuff up and then we cut to luffy and we get to confirm he is still out but he does have a breath sound effect around him, so he is alive. He's just knocked out. And then we get to see from Zunesha. Momonosuke, I can hear it. It really takes me back. I can hear the drums of liberation. This is the first time in 800 years. He is here, without a doubt. Joy Boy, he has returned. And uh, this is where I'm going to go off on my whole thing. So... The final panel seemingly shows Luffy getting either possessed by Joy Boy or he is Joy Boy and this is just Joy Boy's personality manifesting. But another thing that I was going to point out that I haven't seen anyone else point out is the fact that Luffy's hat, I believe, is sort of melting slash stretching-ish. It's a weird thing to see. And I don't think we've ever seen a thing like this with Luffy. But it might be due, in fact, to his devil fruit, which, if this is what I think it is, which is his awakening, we could be seeing Luffy's awakening, obviously, be as I called it with my friends and to myself, the bounce house, or the bouncy castle, whatever you want to call it, Basically, my idea for Luffy's awakening is he can make other things around him bouncy, which wouldn't necessarily aid him in combat unless we're talking the fact that he gets the height advantage on someone, which we saw in Chapter 1000, Luffy is capable of getting on top of someone and delivering a mean hit right to the top of their head. He's done it to Kaido. He's done it to multiple people. So just imagine he's able to slam them into the ground, bounce them back up, and just keep wailing on them. So that's that. That was my idea for why his hat looks weird. Uh, another thing is that the grin sound effect is actually the kanji for Nika, which is sun god Nika. So Nika and Joy Boy are people who freed slaves. Kaido has been, and just this chapter fully said... He will enslave everyone on this island because they lost. A possible idea is that Kaido is bringing all these slaves together and talking all of this, I guess, trash about how he's going to turn everyone into a slave to help manifest a Joy Boy. Like, to bring Joy Boy to Wano, to bring him out of someone in Wano, whatever. There was a time where everyone thought Joy Boy was Momonosuke, because he could hear Zunesha. That has been disproven easily that Luffy is Joy Boy, which I didn't think was a really, really a question, but I guess it was. So what does this mean for 
the next few chapters because we are on break next week so we don't get a chapter um my guess next chapter we'll probably not see any of luffy or joy boy whatever i hope personally that we get a chapter to see where everyone else is a, a catch-up chapter because we know that sanji's out we know that uh frankie saved zoro from falling but we don't know what's up with him and death and all that so we still have a lot to catch up about with the other straw hats we have kaido versus law and kid as a possibility i don't think that's going to be a fight and if it is it's not going to last very long but what i think is more realistic is that joy boy or luffy whatever is going to show up and we are nearing what i think is going to be the do or die moment for luffy either he gets the awakening which i brought up bounce house or he gets a gear fifth what's gear fifth he might get well i guess this is a good time as any what if he gets a king kong gear fifth or a gear fourth form of king kong because he has the uh, kong guns which is him enlarging his hand to a huge size even compared to gear fourth like bounce man which we saw at the beginning of the chapter, one arm is huge compared to the other one. And we know that Joy Boy is a giant. And if Joy Boy is manifesting within Luffy, it wouldn't be super insane to think that he might make some alterations to Luffy's body. I.e. being able to access Gear Forth without the hockey requirement of the time out because it is a different person. So effectively, the rule shouldn't apply to Joy Boy. It should only apply to Luffy, meaning that if anything possesses Luffy, it might be able to find a way around that downside. Meaning that we, he could access Gear Fourth. Meaning that he could possibly enter a new Gear Fourth or a Gear Fifth form that allows him to become a giant, which would fit the whole joy boy having a giant straw hat that that we saw with Eam. it would fit the fact that we do we need a new form to fight kaido luffy has drawn out all the stops he used snake man he used bounce man he used advanced cockers hockey he's used advanced observation hockey he's used advanced armament hockey none of it worked he needs something new either an awakening or a new gear fourth or a gear fifth with but i haven't really touched on the fact that joy boy is here we are officially going to see joy boy in some capacity soon be it uh we might not actually get to see joy boy himself for obvious reasons because he's dead but we might be able to see his manifestation into luffy he might just be the one to wake Luffy up, and then Luffy take, takes it from there. Almost like a, just a wake-up call. I don't know, but this chapter has a lot of uh, big... How do I put it? Implications, I guess. Like, what? I don't even know how to put it. How does Kaido think this is going to go? Because Kaido has beaten Luffy. That was the biggest threat to him was Luffy's existence. And now he's just inside killing as many people as possible. Meaning that Luffy himself would be more and more upset if he found out about this. He'll blame himself for anyone's deaths. So, if Joy Boy tries to take possession of Luffy, and maybe tries to manipulate his body... Another thing I saw thrown around, I think it was on Twitter was that Kaido might not be the final antagonist of Wano. We might get to see possibly a Joy Boy antagonist of him, very similarly to the spoiler alert for Demon Slayer, the ending of Demon Slayer, in which, skip 10 seconds if you don't want to know, um, Muzan possesses Tanjiro. We could be seeing a monster or something evil possess the main character and the main character himself has to fight it off. His friends have to come to his aid. Or he has to snap out of it mentally. Which mentally would probably be seeing through his own eyes. Seeing that his friends are possibly getting hurt. And he can't control it. 
Um, him forcing it out would probably just be him mood shifting back to Luffy and like suppressing Joy Boy, similar to Jujutsu Kaisen. Or Joy Boy might not actually try to take control of Luffy in any evil way. He might just be here for a wake up call. Like, hey, Luffy, get your head out of your ass. You need to wake up. Take this energy or take this hockey. We could also be saying if the theory of Joy Boy's hockey being a different idea than Luffy's hockey, because physical form and all that, we could see one of the biggest, ho- one of the most powerful hockey users possible. Because he is a legendary pirate 800 years ago. If he had hockey, it would be, depending on how the seas were back then, it would be very powerful. He's a giant. I don't think we've ever seen a giant use hockey. Are they inherently gifted? Are they inherently not gifted? Whatever. There's a lot of implications. So this was a very short chapter review, actually. Uh, There was, it's a good chapter, but not a whole lot to talk about. But, um, yeah, my hope is for King Kong Gear 4th. Uh, a big giant form of Gear Fourth of Luffy would set up nicely for Elbaf. Uh, he turns into a giant during the fight on Elbaf. Everyone sees it. They're all, "Oh my God, he's he's a god. He's our savior." Whatever. Um, but until next time, stay safe, have fun, and read more manga. Okay, guys. Bye.